Alex and you are co-captains. Can, can you take us into those conversations? You know, there are some things where I'm just like, I know Alex would be better at this. I'm going to let her take it. I think we do have a good relationship. Joining me today, tonight, tomorrow, five days into this World Cup, but time's officially already a flat circle, is a woman who I have long admired. The creative heartbeat of your US women's national team, one of the single most complete American players in our game, a goal-grabbing, assist-crafting midfield force who can thread a pass through time and space like no other. Joining us live from Auckland, New Zealand, on direct from Down Under, presented by Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. It's the captain of the US women's national team, the single most iconic Colorado institution since Rocky Mountain National Park. Welcome back to the truly magical Lindsay Horan. Ah, oh, thank you for having me. What a nice introduction, Raj. God, you deserve it, Lindsay. It's such a bloody joy to be with you. First of all, this is, I believe, officially the summer of Haran. In the course of just one June week, you ended a club season in which you won the League and Cup double with Lyon, became engaged, were called into your second World Cup squad and named co-captain of this US team on their quest for the three-peak glory. That is a lot of life, Linz. How are you taking all of this in? Um, yeah, it's been a bit of, bit of a whirlwind, but all really good things, you know. Uh, I think obviously the most important thing was getting ready for this World Cup um, <laughs> after ending the season. And yeah, my fiance tried to make me as happy as possible going into it. So uh, that was that was sweet of him. Um, but yeah, it, it was it's just been full focus on on this and and everything that we're doing. And yeah, I'm just grateful uh, for everything. I love your philosophy. That's a lot of good things. Good things better than bad things. And I want to say, when I think of you, I think of someone who lives and loves football as an elite player, more than almost any player I have ever met. You you are both an elite player and an unabashed super fan. I mean, you watch the game all the bloody time. You were recently asked to describe your ideal day. And I think you said drinking coffee and watching football. And we know your schedule's packed carefully managed but how much football are you watching right now either this world cup or outside of it is it like a distraction does it calm you what are you taking in uh yeah i actually think football calms me down more than anything i think the more football i watch the more i learn the more i you know even from other world cup games i i can watch players in my position watch players that we're playing against there's there's always ways to learn but for some reason it just calms me down it makes me a little bit more stable and nerves you know kind of lower um and it i'm a footballer like i just i want to watch football i don't know why any other footballer wouldn't want to do that but uh my teammates give me so much crap for how much how much i watch and post about it and and whatnot so anytime you see me relaxing i'm i'm watching the game I mean, you are so proper football that even in the midst of the World Cup, you are posting footage of, of Busquets' best touches on his debut. Oh, they were unbelievable. It, <laughs> I mean, that's you, though. You're like, I'm winning this, but I'm watching that and I'm taking it all in. And I need to ask you about that other bloke who played a bit, Lionel something. What do yeah, you think of What's that? his last name? Yeah, um, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, you had his photo on your bedroom wall. Of Since course. you were like a kid, you probably, I think you even had like a Barca duvet. My whole room was Barca, it's embarrassing. But, and by the way, we're not talking about when she was a kid, we're talking like about three months ago, but yeah, ha, still how, are you, how, are you, how are you experiencing this? And you can't believe you've not met Lionel Messi yet, can you? Yeah, I cannot believe it. I don't know how anyone hasn't set it up. Like Men in Blazers could probably set it up, still haven't, I don't know. Um, we, can, we can get you DeAndre Yedlin. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> Close, close. Um, no, the, you know, Messi being in, in the MLS, one, I was pissed off because I'm like, I'm still in Europe and I want him to be in Europe. So I have more chances to watch him play. So that was like, selfishly, I'm, I'm upset. Two, Messi being in the MLS. I mean, you've seen how much it's caused, you know, Inter Miami is the most followed team in, in the MLS now. The tickets sold, you know, everyone want, wants to come and watch Messi. But you do live this game like no other. Did my eyes deceive me? Or at the send-off game in San Jose, in that post-game ceremony where you all had to walk under that arch while the smoke cannons went off, did you drop the, the Hung Min Song goal celebration? Okay, it, it is his goal celebration, but I'm an Arsenal fan, so I just want to make that clear. This was, it's like a little inside thing with me and my fiance, but um, it is like a really cool thing what he does. I don't know if anyone's ever listened to why he does it, but it's like to capture the moment that he just scored, to make it a memory, 
it's it's freaking cool it is he came on our show and told us that story oh, he i did, asked him yeah. why he did it and that's what you were doing in that moment that was your message i mean it's a very becky sourbrew message mm -hmm. make a memory of everything you're doing in this journey yeah it's it's amazing and actually becky has has told me that embrace you know everything in this role that i have and everything that we're doing and also just enjoy every single moment of this world cup it gets crazy it gets kooky stress all these things nerves just enjoy all of that because not a lot of people get to be living in that stress and that pressure in these kind of world cups and one of the things i admire so much about you lindsay haran you feel things, you really do, emotions, moments in games, vibes, you think, you feel things so deeply, more than most mere mortals. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I do like to show my emotions in games. Sometimes uh, maybe I, I shouldn't be showing them as much, but uh, <laughs> I'm very passionate when it comes and you don't know what's going to uh, come out of my mouth uh, during a game, but yeah. <sighs> I appreciate that, is, that you enjoy that. I spoke to Savannah DeMello last night and she talked about how you are going around giving out hugs on the regs to all the new World Cuppies, as I think you called them in, intervie in an interview. You are clearly so central now. You know, between the OG generation of, you know, the Julie Ertzes, the Kelly O'Hara's, the Alex Morgans and the 40 new players. Is that how you see yourself, your role, Lindsay, as the connective tissue? Uh, it's starting to feel more like that, to be perfectly honest. I think I do have a really good relationship with uh, everyone on the team and kind of being that middle balance. And I think obviously being a little younger and being closer with some of the younger players, it's easier for me to, to connect with them and, and know what they're going through. But I think because of the experience that we have on this team, all the veterans on this team, I think it's been a really easy uh, mesh with the, the younger girls and explaining to them like what it means to be here at this World Cup, you know, what the standard is, what the level is. Like, I never had a doubt with any of these players. And it showed in the, the first World Cup game, you see some of the players that, I mean, that's Savannah's second cap and she's absolutely killing it in her first World Cup match. It's, uh, it's amazing. And then Soph Smith, I don't really need to say any more about her. Alex and you are co-captains. Can, can you take us into those conversations between the two of you, you know, how you divide the roles and the responsibilities? Are you both just nourishing wonders like Abby and Alana in Broad City or do you, or do, you do it more like good cop, bad cop? Uh, <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, it's funny. It's like you know, there are some things where I'm just like, I know Alex would be better at this. I'm going to let her take it. I think we do have a good relationship. Um, in that way because we bounce things off of each other we both have maybe a little bit different opinions in certain situations and we know you know our our strengths and our weaknesses and so i think that's why we actually have a good collaboration and also like you know can be a bounce board for vaco but can be a bounce board for the rest of the team as well i want to talk about someone who is when fit a guaranteed name on that team sheet in the same way as you are and it's rose lavelle she came on against vietnam around the hour mark she changed the game. You know, I know she's your great mate. And on the field, she brings out that same sense of mischief, impudence, willingness to laugh and just think differently to everybody else as she does off it. What's it like to play alongside Rose Lavelle in full float? Well, let me tell you. First off, it's like so nice for me because Rose knows how I play. So I could be doing a low, uh, no look pass. It looks like I'm playing it freaking long ball wide or whatever. And Rose knows I'm gonna slip her in a, in a seam two. This is like, the, the, we're getting too tactical here. But Rose just knows how I play. So I'm, I get so pumped up <laughs> when we actually connect on the field, which we did in in the Vietnam game. But she just brings, uh, she brings another sense of confidence to the team. I think when she subbed on, she created, you know, she created two or three chances in the, I don't know, 25 minutes, 30 minutes that she was on and big, big opportunities. And she can do that with just individual brilliance. So um, that's what's exciting about Rose. She's always been that way and she's always that key player for this team. How different a force are the United States with Rose and without her? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like I said, it's just her individual brilliance, the things that she can create, the the magic that she can create, I think it just, it sets us aside to, uh, sets us apart from, you know, what we are and what we could be. And it's, it's little nuances. And, and that's what is so special about Rose. I could 
go on and on about her. Question from a listener, Gigi in Arlington, Virginia. I raise my Bud Light to you, Gigi. Gigi wants to know, you'll be coming up against your club teammate from Lyon, Danielle van der Donk. And when you play a club teammate at international level, how do you take what you know from playing that player day in, day out in training and almost use it against them? You're giving your US women's national team teammates a lowdown before kickoff. I just say, watch out for your ankles with, with Dan. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's that's more for me. Me and me and Dan have an ongoing joke that like every time we've played against each other before we became friends, we were just like sh- going after each other. It was a nonstop battle in the in the midfield every time that we played against them. And I was so I was just like, who is this girl? I I'm not gonna say names here, but she's like kicking on my ankles all the time. I'm like, I don't like this player. <laughs> and I get to Leon and I get to train with her day in, day out. And I think it obviously we became friends, but um it took a while how, though, didn't it? Yeah. You're still a, giving her the side eye for a long time. <laughs> no, she was actually one of the nicest girls when I first showed up. Um so I, I do appreciate appreciate that but I think it's more it turns into respect. I have a lot of respect for Dan, her game, how much she does on the field and it's like it's it's the nitty gritty stuff. It's the stuff that you hate doing on the field. The amount that she runs, the hard work defensively. I mean, she's she's incredible. She makes my job easier at Lyon. So, I think that's the information that I pass on to my teammates. It's like she can like make something out of nothing, and and it's her work on the field. So, that's why I appreciate Dan so much. You said in a recent interview about playing against Van der Donk that you get trash talk every single day from Dan Van der Donk. And once we play them, you'll see it. She'll be coming from my ankles like every (laughs) single play. Watch out for that because it's going to be fun. I've got to know, so many ways to troll nowadays. So how does all this trash talking all go down? Is it like, is it on the field? Is it in text, an Instagram DM, a voice note, a bad karaoke to the Dutch national anthem? How How does it get delivered? I feel like it's usually like on the it's on the field or it'll be just like a little a little comment with a laugh. So like she's trying to get in your head or I try to do the same thing back to her. I don't know what's going to happen in this game, but we'll see. She's on a yellow card, so she's got to watch out. (laughs) (laughs) You said you said in a recent interview about your Leon experience that, quote, I think a lot of American fans may not understand my football because I think I play a very European-based style of game. And I'm fascinated by this. What do you see as the main difference between American style of football and the European style? Well, I don't want to get fans or people upset, but um, I think in Europe, everything is so possession-oriented and valuing the ball. Whereas like U.S. is getting more and more like this. We're actually growing a lot in the game. and You can see it with our national team. But it is like so physically demanding. It's so, I mean, you have players that can do individual brilliance type of football where they're just dribbling and running past players. You know, that how, how many goals that so Smith score for Portland where she gets the ball, it's a counterattack, and she's dribbling past three players and we score a goal. I think a lot of times in Europe because of the way that we play especially in Lyon like you are building up you are valuing the ball so much in possession like if you're not stringing together five or six passes it's it's almost a failure so I think (laughs) I think I appreciate that so much because that's how I like to play I like to play with the ball I like to manipulate defenders teams and and be able to score off of those those kind of opportunities. Lindsay, I've got the honour of covering this World Cup with your friend and US midfield teammate, Sam Mewis. Oh. And, and, <laughs> and she said after watching you on Friday, we taped something right afterwards. This is her quote. She said, I think this tournament is Lindsay's moment to be like, this is who I am as a player. This is the impact that I can have on the game for the whole world to see. And I think it's beautiful what she said. But what do you think of that? Does it resonate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're making me cry. Um, that's actually so cool. Um, me, and, me and Sam have shared a lot of really special moments. I have to shout her out last World Cup. I think me and Sam were not battling for a position, but we were playing the same position and some games you know, she was starting some games I was, and we had such a cool relationship where we were just like, we don't care who the hell is on the field. We're going to root for them, and we want to win, so we're going to prepare 
both of ourselves to to win these games because we want to win the World Cup. And after that, I felt like I had this really close relationship in that way with Sam, which is really hard when you know you're constantly at a, a competing uh, position. So for Sam to say that about me now, I think it really it means a lot. Obviously, she's a friend, teammate, and I wish she was here more than anything. Um, so you can see that's a <laughs> very emotional thing for me. So I, I love you, Sam. Poor woman. Not only is she not there, but she's got a podcast with me, Lind. I know. I, how does she do it? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I wouldn't wish it on Danielle van der Donk. Lindsay, I raise this Bud Light in toast to you, to your teammates, your family, your fiance Tyler, to all that is to come. May it be Lindsay Haran's summer, and we're all just watching. Thank you. Big, big love. Courage. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods. But first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. Courage.